decided to upgrade to a dual battery system because we don't want to get stuck with the old battery um, we don't want to get stuck with the old battery not being able to start the motor so the idea is we're putting in the house battery to run the fish finder and the radio and stuff like that and whatever else we decide to put on the boat the bilge pump yeah we've gone for a slightly more premium way of doing it we're fitting this dual battery isolator kit pretty much this thing here just uh flips senses the amps of the battery the starter battery and then uh cuts in or cuts out depending on if it needs charging you can have an emergency setting where you can use the house battery to um start your start battery if something goes wrong so yeah overall good work and safety excuse the i'm not going to film this so excuse the mess i have just started but i'm going to show you how to do it because why not things have been updated over the course of the years can't remember when one of these videos was last posted so i'm going to do a, a modern version of it with the powertech dual battery anyway so our old battery sits just in that gap there took to it start the motor right at the back we're going to put the new battery at the front under there out the way obviously you can put it wherever you want in your boat for me i need five meters five meters of cable to run the whole way around to connect to this battery i'm going to show you how to do it so yeah first of all i'm running the positive and the negative from that battery you need a negative from that battery to your, uh, to your other battery and then to your appliances and you need a positive from this which is going to sit where the isolator is and run all the way around to the back of the boat there i'm going to show you that now so this comes with six meters of cable 10 mil cable all spooled up um yeah so we're going to use this i've got five mil of the other gear for the negative that paired separately don't come with this but sometimes obviously if you're going to put the batteries next to each other you don't need this you only need the positive but anyway we move as you can see my negative my negative cable is here and it's going to connect into the negative on here and i've just ran it through um these eaves or whatever they're called along here and it's going to run along the side now i'm going to do the uh negative more pink than red this negative but i'm just going to follow the same route as the other cable So I've just pulled all the excess through the other side and I've just made these cables roughly the same length and I'm trying to just keep them nice and neat in the same direction as they go through. But yeah, I'm just going to do that the whole way along. I ran all the way from the back to the front where the battery is going to go down there and then they'll get terminated to the battery right next part of the job so I did just jump out of sync I'm going to go back and do it just in case people want to follow along I'm going to do it as this says
So the cons of this, step two, isolate the starting battery by removing the negative terminal. So your red, in this case it's black, but it's got red heat shrink on it. So that's indicating that it's the positive. You can also tell by there's a plus sometimes. And the negative is the one with minus. So whip that off with whatever size socket, whether it makes you happy. So mine's 13 mil. It's already loose. This is half the problem why we're changing it because I bought new versions of these clamps. It's hard to do one handed, but you just loosen it off and then remove it. Done. I'm just going to do the other one because why not? And now I'm changing them. You might not need to do this. Odds are you probably will. Same again, 30 mil. Really difficult with one hand. <laughs> Remove it. Done. Battery disconnected. All right, step three. Select the location for the spark battery isolator that is easily accessible and will not have the cables running near exhausts and is as close as possible to the starting battery. So I'm going to swap that or I'll try and get it next to it. I don't know if I'm going to be able to get it next to it. We'll find out. I'll let you know in a second. You'll see. So, a couple of screws in this. Nice and easy, that's removed. In my case, I might reuse this, but you don't have to. And there is a spider in there. And anyone who knows me, knows me, I'm terrified of spiders, so... <laughs> that's what I'm gonna do. Hopefully it didn't jump at me. Thank God. It's already dead. Yeah. Right, so I'm going to slap the new isolator there. If it fits, I'm going to have both of them next to each other. So I can still have a master on and off. But I don't think I can fit them both there. Before you do anything with this, this there's a back plate on this. It's not obvious to you. That pops out with your fingers. And then uh, the positive and the negative. The positive is obviously red to match the cables. But what you want to look with stuff like this, I've seen a, lot, a few people make mistakes. Arguably it's a bit anal, but anyway. That is obviously the right way around. So if you spin it around, ideally you want the cables coming in from underneath because water can't go upwards unless the boat's upside down then you've got bigger problems anyway but for best sake you want to uh, do it entry from the bottom so you've now got to mount this back plate it comes with two little screws and two big screws these little screws are just to attach this first backing plate <laughs> Gonna triple check, but that's still gonna fit. Yeah, that'll go next to it. Sweet. And then the other little screw in the opposite corner. I'm just gonna put this other one up next to it so it's out of the way. And this is one I already had on my boat. If you uh If you need your own, it's fairly simple. It's just both positives come in. The one from the uh, the one from the battery, and then the one to the motor, and then it's just simply an on and off. Sweet, that's on there, nice and solid. Still functions. And then that will fit next to it nicely. So these are knackered on mine. So I'm fitting new ones. So I've pulled the old positive. So I'm putting brand new ones on. And you want to look, if you've got a box like this with openings, you want to look to see where your openings are and figure out how you want your cables laying out so it's easier to get on and off. In my case, I want that cable 
to be on the right and then my other cable that's going to go to the uh, dual battery isolator on the left so I'm going to put that one there and that one there so then when it's sat on the battery like that it's going to be on the right and the left and then pretty much just have this wing nut tighten up Job's a carrot. Cables will slide down the back. That'll go nicely like that. Cables will be nicely together and they'll fit in that gap in the uh, the lid. Then, then, like everything else ever, you get your 13mm on here, spanner or socket, and you just tighten this up. These want to be tight, but they don't want to go over to, to the thicker road. Boom. And now I've got my feed that goes to this isolate which goes to my engine so I can turn it off, make sure my engine's not using any power. And then I've got the feed that's going to go out around and back up to this uh, back to this dual battery isolate there. Next step, uh, you cut this cable to length. It wants to be roughly halfway up there but if you've got the room to give yourself slack and you've got the extra cable, obviously sometimes better to have a bit of slack. I'm just going to tie wrap my cables in there together and then that'll do there for me. Chop that there. Put my rusty old snips. Get a better, better pair of snips than this if you're going to do this job. Yeah, that's true. To strip this cable, I like to use a normal uh, Stanley knife, but you can use a wire strippers if you want. Now, you just want to measure how far the cable wants to go in. And you can come a little bit further because you can slide this sheathing down, so I'm just going to go roughly there, make a mark where my nail is. And then I just like to run a nice sharp blade all the way around. Stick core cable, so you're not really going to do any damage. Them's last words, and then just break it off like that. And the idea is it's not zinc coated, which is cheap and nasty, but whatever. Try not to miss any strands of cable. You just slide that right on. Get a crimping tool, slider in. Like that, make sure it's nice and tight. Personally, I like it to be nice and even with the bottom jaw, but again, very anal. And if I were you, how low your cable is going to go up? So that's the flat edge wants to be like that, so it's going to go nice and neat. And you just crimp it. I know I'm going in the bottom of this isolator, so I'm just going to knock these two um, like glands out, or whatever you want to call them. Just chopping them out with a nice light blade, just chop it on the sides, then you can just crack them off, finish it off with the edge of your blade like peeing on an apple and you just slap that in there like that it just squeezes on there comes with a little locking washer and then a nut which I'm imagining is going to be 13 mil again and if you look there and if you can see it says positive for the start battery obviously wants to be connected to your start battery Yeah, as usual, 30 mil. So you just tighten that on there. Put over tighten things. With the other cable you've already seen me run, you just crimp the other end and it goes on the other side. 
of the second battery. Grab this a little bit further. Knife around it, spin it. That just pops off. Put the knife away so it doesn't stab me, son. That slides on. And again, if you've got it too straw, you can just grab the end of the cable like this, slide the excess down, and then it covers it up like that. It just looks neat and tidy. Trick look nice and tidy look. Now this one just gets slapped next to it there look. Bang around exact same setup. Locking washer nut. Personally, I don't like that. I'm going to go the other way around. Just because I'll show you. That's on there like that. Personally, I'd rather that cable go behind the other one. So that's something to pit it down to. So now I'll swap that around. That'll sit up by there, nice and tidy look. And then, if I can show you. If I ever need to move this battery out, like that, the slack from this one is in front, so it's not going to affect the other cable. That's the thought anyway. So yeah, next step. That's the positives complete. So in this kit, we've got a black cable, which is your earth, and the yellow cable, which is just the uh, emergency override, which just effectively closes the switch. Um, so you can use your auxiliary battery to jump start your uh, starter battery if you need to but you should have a switch for that I currently don't have one so um, we'll get one and do it eventually and I'll do a little update but this one uh, wants to be connected to your negative so I've just realized I've messed up there's only two screws and I've put them where the original screws are so the other screws want to go in the top right and top left messed up but that's good because if you've made this mistake easy to fix just undo them screws move them to the opposite corner a learning opportunity Slap the other screw in. Right, that's them two fitted nicely. So again, your black one's just your earth. This one will get connected to a switch. Again, I might put a switch on the dashboard. So I might just connect a cable. Run that up with this cable. Out the way. And put a switch on the front of the dashboard. As like a jump. But yeah, that's that pretty much done now for that bit. Now on to the next bit, which is uh, the auxiliary battery or the uh, neutrals. This black cable coming from the smart battery isolator has to be connected in with the um, negative on the battery or it doesn't cut in and out. I'll show you now. I figured that out right at the end. So, so I've just crimped that one on and then I've slid it in there. So, as you can see the difference, one's nice and new, one's disgusting. Uh, black for the neutral. So I'm going to swap out this one. This is the neutral from the outboard. Not the neutral, sorry, the negative. And it is, safe to say, it is tight. Oh. Just undo that. Get rid of the old one. That is the negative from the outboard. This is the negative to the auxiliary battery. Exactly the same as the positive. 
I'm just going to slap that on. Tighten the wing nut. And I'm just going to double check to see how this has two open ends on it for the cables to come out. I'm just going to double check where this needs to be seated. So I'm just looking down and I can see the terminal block there and then that's to the right of it. So I'm just going to have it so the exact like same as that one fits there pointing that way. Right and then that'll just sit on there. I'm not going to connect this one until right at the end um, because there's no need to. So I'm just going to leave that off now but that's pretty much ready to go. So I'm just going to tidy up these cables out of the way because I've got all my slack at the other end. I'm just going to uh, cable tie them up out of the way. So I've just, oh, a little light. I've tie wrapped that into there. And some legend has already fitted some screws over on the boat before me. So I'm just going to tie wrap onto that. Just make it nice and neat. that is pretty much it so this is a negative coming from connected to the other bath tree and sea series this is the positive coming from that um, isolate switch so pretty much it'll only charge this when uh, it's sensed that the other battery is full and that the engine is on. Right, we just need to test what we've done now. So I'm going to connect this negative up. Yeah, if you've got an isolate, turn your isolator on. I'm going to connect my fuel. But before I do that, I'm going to see if it... So it's turning over, which is good. Now I'm just going to uh, connect the old fuel in the hose pipe. And give her a run and test that uh, isolator. She's fired up all right. <laughs> now, this according to this. switch is closed and it's allowing power to go from the outboard alternator through here through this battery through this switch to charge that battery because this battery is fully charged which 
up as a carrot. Yeah, that's pretty much it. As you can see, there's a whole lot of mess. I've got to sort out. We fitted a new steering wheel. Stay tuned for the video for that. We've got to sort out all this mess. Obviously, we've only just bought this, but we threw this um, sounder and chart plotter in. We've got to sort all that out. I've got to have everything as neat and tidy as I've just made this. Yeah, click this video now. Like and subscribe, you really help us out. Uh, we're enjoying this and we'd like to keep doing it. Seeing you guys subscribe and uh, like the video is absolutely spot on. So, see ya. Thanks, guys. Adios, kids.